Unless you've been living under a rock for the past few months, you know that there's a new iPhone in town and it's significantly different than all previous models. Maybe you've been lucky enough to get one by now. Maybe you just spent some time admiring the new all-screen device at the Apple store near you. Or maybe you're counting the days for your device to arrive. Either way, some of you users already have the new device and your app is being tested on it whether you're ready for it or not. So let's try to make sure you are ready. You don't want your users to be the first to test your app on any device without knowing what they should expect, right? If you're using standard UIKit components and auto layout, you should be relatively good to go. If you're using custom controls, there may be some work that needs to be done. Either way, if you haven't even tested your app on the iPhone X simulator, now is a good time to do that. All you need is to run it using Xcode 9 with iOS 11 as the base SDK and make sure you have a launch storyboard. Don't forget about landscape mode, both left and right. That's where you'll encounter most of the issues. One example of iPhone 10 compatibility in Google Apps is the side navigation, which is something you may have encountered in many of our apps. This is how it used to look before the iPhone 10 adaptations, and this is a screenshot from a recent release of Google Photos. Want to know how we did it? Stay tuned. Let's start with a general description of the new iPhone. It has a Super Retina display, 3x, 1125 by 2436 pixels. The screen size is 375 by 1812 points, meaning same width as the iPhone 6, 7, and 8, but 145 points taller, which means roughly a 20% height addition. This means an aspect ratio of 9 to 19.5 instead of 9 to 16. Note that not all of this new space is necessarily yours to use, as the status bar now uses 44 points, and the home indicator almost doubles the height of the toolbar if and when one is used. One more point about the status bar. Since the status bar is taller on iPhone X, if you're using a 20-point constant somewhere, now would be a good time to change that to use the real status bar height for the current device. Also, the status bar no longer changes its height for different situations, such as location tracking or phone calls. The space used by the status bar on both sides of the sensor housing isn't used by the app, so if you're hiding the status bar, you may want to reconsider. In landscape, due to the rounded corners and the sensor housing, the layout margins are now 64 points instead of just 20 points. Note that Apple's human interface guidelines indicate that you should keep your UI centered in landscape mode and not change the margins based on the side the sensor housing happens to be in at the moment. Your users will appreciate the consistency and know where to expect each control. So a few easy things you, need, you can do in order to make your app more iPhone 10 compatible. If you're using a background image, it should cover the entire screen, including the sensor housing and home indicator areas. Don't try to hide these areas or draw any special attention to them. Remember that the iPhone X has a different aspect ratio and compose your images in a way that the most important visual information isn't lost when they are centered and cropped. Since you now need to support multiple sizes of your image files, you can use PDF or make sure you provide both at 2x and at 3x versions for all of your images. More specifically, Apple's human interface guidelines recommend using JPEG for photos, PNG for photorealistic app icons, and PDF for glyphs and other flat vector artwork that requires high resolution scaling. Similar to previous devices with new capabilities, make sure to only use capabilities that are supported on the current device. For example, don't reference Touch ID on iPhone X and don't reference Face ID on older unsupported devices. When placing controls, avoid problematic positions, such as overlapping the home indicator or cropped by the rounded corners. Instead, insert visual elements to prevent cutting and overlapping. Note that the home indicator will change its appearance based on the background it's displayed on to ensure it's visible to the user. A couple more things you need to know about the home indicator. Now that the home button is gone, the user swipes up from the bottom of the screen to get back to the home screen. This is what the home indicator is for. Note that it shouldn't affect vertical swipes or scrolling experience, since most of these start in the middle of the screen and not the very bottom. If your app encourages users to swipe from the very bottom of the screen, please reconsider. If you still decide this is the best experience for your app, you can use the Preferred Screen Edges Deferring System Gestures method to indicate that the first swipe will be handled by your app, and it will require two such swipes in order for the home indicator to take over. Note that taps in the home indicator area are never hijacked by the home indicator and will always be handled by your app. If your app offers a passive full screen experience, such as watching a full screen video, for example, you can use the prefers home indicator auto hidden method. This will cause the home indicator to disappear when there is no screen interaction. It will reappear when the user interacts with the screen. Make sure to only use these two methods when it is really the best or only solution 
Your users are used to certain interaction with the home indicator and don't want to feel trapped in your app. And now for the last tip, and the one you'll probably use most often, safe areas. In your zip or storyboard file, enable Use Safe Area Layout Guides. It won't be automatically enabled for older files. This will automatically change constraints that are set to the view's boundaries to use safe areas instead. Safe areas represent the parts of your view that aren't obscured by rounded corners, the home indicator, or the sensor housing. So if, for example, you have the control with constraints to be displayed X points from the bottom of the view, you'll probably want to update it to be X points from the bottom safe area so that it won't be overlapped by the home indicator. A specific example for table views, as you can see in Apple system apps, for example, is the table view itself goes from one end to the screen to the other. It's easily visible in the headers, while the actual content is indented according to the safe areas. This is mainly visible in landscape, since there is the, since there, the left and right insets are significantly different than on older devices due to the sensor housing. I hope you found this useful and will use what you learned here in order to provide all of your users on all devices the best possible user experience while using your app. I can assure you they'll appreciate it. Until next time, I'm Ronnie Rosen for Route 85. Thanks for watching. <laughs>